The Tang Dynasty Tour Chapter 2 Chang'an in a Dream Section 4 Poor people, poor monks After the snow, the sun shone on the snow and reflected the dazzling white light. The whole world was illuminated, not only the corners where the sun couldn't shine but also the darkness in the heartfelt glimmer of light. Yunye felt that he seemed to have a mental illness. When others laughed, he also laughed. When others cried, he looked at the situation and cried. He always felt that he could only react after seeing others react, just like a fool. Ziao climbed on his back and didn't come down. It didn't matter. He carried her on his back. The little girl didn't weigh a few pounds, but it made the other little ones unhappy. They all pouted, but they were honest after being slapped by the old lady and obediently got into the carriage. The exclusive carriage that Yunyi had built in Lanzhou at public expense was sent back to the mansion by his subordinates last night. The carpenters in the family called it a masterpiece. The axles were made of refined steel, and four thin steel sheets with elasticity were riveted on them. A pair of copper tiles embraced the axles and rotated freely. The carriage wheels made of ancient vine strips were light and reduced bumps. The carriage was also covered with something unknown, which was soft and light. According to the military officer who sent it, the Marquis sat in this carriage back to Chang'an from Lanzhou, and it had not been damaged much after more than 2,000 miles. There were many carriages in Chang'an that were more luxurious and luxurious than this one, but there were few that were more comfortable. After obtaining Yunyi's consent, the housekeeper's aunt used it as the exclusive carriage for the head of the Yun family and sent a skilled coachman to take care of it. The old lady hugged Xiao Ya and got into the carriage drawn by two horses. The etiquette of the Marquis mansion stipulated that the head of the family must ride in a double horse. Yunyi got on the mare that he had always ridden and followed the carriage. Lu Jinbao and Zhuang Santing were in front to lead the way. Four male servants held flags and banners, and four maids carried incense burners. Eight guards on one side, mightily marching towards CIN Temple. Dacian Temple was not far away, just south of Chang'an City. After crossing Zuck Avenue and walking around five blocks, you would arrive at Dacian Temple. At this time, Cian Temple was far from being as magnificent and magnificent as the legend. It was not until the 22nd year of Zhenguan that Emperor Li Er ordered it to be expanded, and then it was renovated by Li Ji. Coupled with the construction of the Big Wild Goose Pagoda by Master Xian Zhang, it became one of the four major translation sites. The Dharma-like consciousness-only school of Buddhism was born here. The area around Cian Temple was a slum area. The dilapidated walls of the square had been eroded by the years and are modeled. The lois was exposed outside, and it was all hollowed out by sparrows. At this time, behind the small holes in the wall, pairs of eyes looked at the Yun family's luxurious motorcade in surprise, whispering about which family had come to this filthy place. The brand new Fang Guan opened the gate of the square early, and the dust on the inner street was cleaned up. Several elderly people stood on one side with their bodies bowed. Note, Fang Guan was a minor official who administrated the neighborhood. The old lady couldn't sit still anymore and pulled Da Ya and Xiao Ya out of the carriage. When the old people saw the old lady, 
they took a few steps forward and then stepped back under the reprimand of the Fang Guan. When the old lady was poor, she was familiar with these old people. Now that she was rich and noble, Fang Guan believed that these poor old men couldn't come forward and talk to the old lady as before. Brother Lu, Brother He, De Quan, Ren Zhu, why don't you recognize the old girl the old lady didn't care about it, and still used the old name, with a smile on her face, and reached out to hold an old man with white hair and a beard, Brother Lu, if it wasn't for you carrying Da Ya over the wall that night to seek medical treatment for her, this girl would have been gone long ago. Why are you so estranged now Da Ya and Xiao Ya have long been holding the old man's legs, Grandpa, Grandpa, calling non-stop. Old man Lu rubbed his hands on his legs a few times and carefully picked up the two little girls, his eyes were red, and he couldn't speak with his trembling mouth. Da Ya took out a pack of beef jerky, picked up a stick, and put it in the old man's mouth, this is what my brother brought to Da Ya from Lanzhou, far, far away. It's delicious. Da Ya has been keeping it for Grandpa. Is it delicious? The old man's tears flowed down all at once, and he tried his best to chew the hard beef jerky with his toothless mouth, nodding repeatedly. Yunyi had seen this kind of scene, knowing that once the gate of emotion was opened, the distance of identity would disappear. Sure enough, the women who were hiding in the house came out one after another, chattering around the old lady, the old lady was full of red light, and kept pulling Yunyi back and forth, showing off a few words, in envy of the neighbors, the vanity is fully satisfied in the eyes of Ah. Yunyi straightened his clothes, dusted his sleeves, and respectfully gave a salute to the neighbors. The old men repeatedly said they didn't dare. Yunyi said with a serious face, the poor and the humble see the truth. When the Yun family was in trouble, all the women and children had received the help of the neighbors. Yunyi will never forget it for the rest of his life. Today, I have prepared a small gift to thank you for your kindness. I hope you will accept it. The servants behind pulled several large carts of gifts. The old lady had been poor and naturally knew what the poor needed. Several large carts of hemp rolls, 100 burdens of grain, 6 fat pigs, and even charcoal that the poor rarely used, salt, and wine were naturally not lacking. Yun Yi rewarded the official with one tail of silver. He really couldn't stand being filled with copper coins. The official was so happy that he couldn't see his teeth. Since it was a reward, of course, he had to get rid of the government. Even a semi-official person like the official had to be got rid of. Yun Ye just handed it over to the leading elders for distribution. Several little girls were surrounded by children. Although their clothes were ragged, they were very excited. It turned out that Da Ya and Xiao Ya were distributing snacks to the children. Watching them hold the snacks and let their parents take a bite, Yun Ye felt very sad. The Yun family reluctantly bid farewell to the neighbors and continued to advance towards CIN Temple. After all, the current Yun family was no longer suitable to get along with the poor. It was not that the Yun family was arrogant, but that the classes were different. The strict etiquette was not something that Yun Ye, a newcomer, could break. CIN Temple was just ahead. The dilapidated temple, the poor monks, stood outside the temple in the cold weather to wait. The old lady asked the coachman to speed up, 
fearing that the masters would freeze. Monks generally call themselves poor monks. Look at how poor this master is. A grey monk's robe is worn on his body. In the cold weather, his bald head is frozen blue. Several eminent monks follow him. They are really thin and tall. The clothes are full of patches. With their hands folded together, they pay homage to the three treasures. When Yunya helped the old lady get out of the carriage, he stepped forward to salute. He couldn't even say a complete sentence of Umitba. After the old woman and the elder had finished saluting, the elder led the way, and the whole family entered CIN temple mightily. The Dakshin Hall was not big, no more than two feet high. The wronged Buddha had to rub his head against the roof, and the gold paint on his body was mottled as if he had a skin disease. Such a dilapidated temple, with only five monks, only one hall, only three Buddhas, and only ten acres of land, no matter how Yunya could not connect it with the future great CIN temple. Xianzang went to India and did get a huge return. Not to mention the Dian Pagoda, which later became a landmark in Xi'an, even the remaining buildings that had survived the war and natural disasters were not comparable to the CIN temple. Note, a Dakshin Hall or a Mahavira Hall, usually simply known as a main hall, is the main hall or building in a traditional Chinese Buddhist temple, enshrining representations of Gautama Buddha and various other Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. The old lady offered the tribute, and Yunya seemed to see the monks drooling and faintly heard the gurgling sound from their stomachs. My God, such a temple also makes the old lady respect it like a god if you lie, you should have some capital, okay I haven't seen the temples like this in later generations. Regardless of whether the Buddha is effective or not, you have to pay the money to enter the door. Otherwise, you will not be able to see the Buddha. Those so-called monks treat the Buddha as monkeys in the zoo. People buy tickets to visit, which makes people not have a trace of respect. The most disrespectful people to the Buddha in this world are those so-called monks. Fortunately, these monks were still dedicated, and they insisted on completing the entire repayment process. The old lady knelt on the futon devoutly, muttering words in her mouth, for fear that a trace of disrespect would provoke the Buddha's blame. Not only the old lady but also the relatives who had suffered were extremely devout. Before coming, they took a bath, changed clothes, and dressed up. Each of them had a big peach on their heads. After asking, they learned that this was the most popular who hairstyle this year. Try to dress yourself up to make the Buddha look pleasing to the eye so that you can get some blessings. The eight children, imitating the adults, closed their eyes and recited Amitba. Their devout appearance made Yunya feel very pitiful. Forget it, Yunya sighed, knelt in front of the Buddha statue, and thanked the Buddha for giving him such relatives. God gave back to him what had been lost. He didn't treat him badly. This worship was not to worship these clay sculptures and wood carvings, but to kneel to the magic of fate and the warmth of family. Sure enough, there has been an unchanging process from ancient times to the present, and that is to give money, a full box of copper coins, ten pieces of linen, twenty pairs of monk shoes, twenty sets of monk clothes, fifty stones of grain, and countless incense candles and vegetable oil. The old monk's ancient well-like face showed an excited color, and it is estimated that he was cheering, this winter is over. 
the old lady had a wish fulfilled, with her grandson and granddaughter surrounding her, she smiled like a laughing Buddha, and her spirit was so vigorous, that it wouldn't be a problem for her to live another twenty years. The horse was handed over to the servant, the old lady was handed over to the maid to take care of, the elders didn't like to show their faces on the street, the grandchildren didn't have these concerns, Da Ye had already taken the position on Yun Ye's neck, happily making faces at her sisters. Zhuang San Ting, and Lu Jinbao protected a group of chattering women, big and small, and strode towards the West Market. Yun Ye had seen wide roads, but he had never seen a road this wide, it was a full 150 meters wide and 10 miles long. If there was a World Cup at this time, why would they need to rotate venues just put them all on Zuck Street and the competition would be complete? At first, he thought that his mighty army would be eye-catching enough, but he didn't expect to see a crowd of carriages, and among the fragrant clothes and handsome faces, an unknown woman smiled, almost causing Yun Ye to fall over, that woman saw Yun Ye acting like a fool and a country bumpkin, and covered her mouth and chuckled. Da Ya covered her brother's eyes to prevent him from being bewitched by the vixen and bared her teeth at the woman, who laughed even more happily. It's a pity that Zhang Yumu was wrong, there were no palace women with half of their breasts exposed, only bloated women wrapped like pandas. Yun Ye sincerely hoped that in the summer, these women wouldn't be wrapped up so tightly as they were in the winter, I finally made it to the Tang dynasty, you should at least give me some benefits. <laughs>